So while we're busy with the route reflector, what I'll do is configure the other two routers in this initial configuration, router 3 and router 1. So router BGP 65000, neighbor 1114, remote autonomous system 65000. That's going to be a route reflector client. And the update source is going to be loopback zero. We need to do something similar for router one in this topology. Looks like I forgot to put a loopback on that router. So I'll simply use 11112. In the real world, you obviously want to plan this better. But this is a lab, so we don't have to worry so much about that. I'm going to build this based on the input that I receive from you. So that's okay if we change things as we go along. So show IP BGP summary. These two new neighbors are currently idle, and that makes sense because we need to configure IP addresses on the routers. So on router three, this is an iOS Dynamips router. IP address will be this interface F0 slash 1 will be 172.16.3.2. Interface F0 slash 0 will be 172.16.4.1. Interface F1 slash 0 will be 172.16.5.1. So show IP interface brief. We can see that our IP addresses are configured and the interfaces are up, so that's good. Router OSPF1 and I'll enable OSPF in area zero on all interfaces. So hopefully we'll learn uh, the loopbacks of other routers. Our neighbor relationship has come up to 1.1.1.3, which is good, that's the route reflector router. So at this point we can ping the loopbacks of the other routers, so that's great. So let's configure BGP. Neighbor 1.1.1.3, remote autonomous system, 65,000. We're going to use the loopback as the update source. So hopefully our neighbor relationship will come up. So show IP BGP summary. That looks good. Show IP route. We've got some OSPF routes. Let's check the BGP routing table. We are learning BGP routes such as this loopback address and the default route. So IP domain lookup. IP name server is google ping google.com that's not working let's check what's going on we are learning routes in the routing table so once again we can ping router one's loop back can we ping 172.16.1.1 yes we can 1.2 we can show ip bgp we are learning the default route, which is available via this next hop. One thing you're going to want to do with IBGP is set the next hop to yourself. So one thing we may want to do is on the NAT router is set the next hop to ourselves rather than the external router. 
So router BGP 65,000. The next top router is the NAT cloud. And we actually want to set the next top to the local router. So I'll do a clear IP BGP star. Be careful doing that in the real world. You can cause a lot of problems. So back on router three, we still haven't learnt the routes through BGP. And that's the issue, it can take time for routes to come through. So even in this small network, it's taking time for the routes to be populated. That's looking better on the NAT router. What about on router three? We're still learning routes. And there you go, notice the difference now. Default route is via 1.1.1.1. Previously, the default route was via 192.168.122.1, which is the NAT cloud. So can router 3 ping google.com? Yes, it can. Can it ping cisco.com? Yes, it can. So we've successfully configured this router. The last router to configure before we test connectivity from our LAN is router 1. Now previously it got an IP address via DHCP on the FOST Ethernet interface. So show IP interface brief. It's got IP addresses configured for the local LAN. Those sub interfaces are configured for inter VLAN routing on the LAN interface. Show run interface F01 using DHCP at the moment and outside NAT. Now typically, this router would be a customer rather than part of the ISP. So I'm gonna move the cloud back a bit and leave R1 as a customer rather than being part of the ISP. And we could do something similar for the other devices in the topology. Let me know how you want me to adjust this. We can have some devices that are part of the ISP, such as this HP. I wanna show you BGP on HP routers. So I think we'll have some of the HP routers in the autonomous system, and then we can just add additional routers for the customer. So on the customer, we could run DHCP here and perhaps we should do that so that we replicate what's happening in the real world. So this interface will use DHCP, but that means that router three needs to allocate an IP address to router one through DHCP. So on router three acting as our ISP, IP DHCP pool, let's say customer one. Network 172.16.4.0. And the mask will be a slash 24 mask in this example. Default router will be 172.16.4.1. DNS server will be Google. So show IP DHCP binding. No IP addresses are allocated at the moment. Show run interface F0 slash 0. That interface is configured correctly. So 4.1. That looks good. 4.1 is pingable, so that looks good. We've got our DHCP pool configured. Show IP DHCP binding. Notice an IP address has been allocated. And if we look at rod one, it's been allocated an IP address via DHCP. So in other words, router three on the left has allocated an IP address to router one. So show IP route. We've got a default gateway pointing to router three. Ping google.com. As you can see, that took a while, but it did resolve. Ping cisco.com also works. So router one acting as a customer has been allocated an IP address through DHCP from router three. Router three is running BGP. It learnt the default route through BGP. 
from the router reflector and can connect to the internet. Can the customer PCs in the LAN ping the internet? <laughs> 